Hi, I'm Wisdom Richland. I'm your online chemistry tutor. And today we'll be talking about the element mixture and compound in topic 1C of your jam syllabus. In this video, I'm going to explain the element mixture and compound and also give you the jam questions that they ask on this very subtopic. So stick to the end of this video because every point in this video is going to be delivering value. Element mixture and compound is the chemical classification of matter. Matter is classified into the physical classification and the chemical classification. The physical classification which you already know is the solid, liquid and gas, while the chemical classification is what we call the element mixture and the compound. Okay, so knowing this, now let's go further. Element and compound are pure substances. And in my last video, I told you that pure substances are substances that have that fixed composition and fixed properties. So element is a pure substance that cannot be decomposed into any simpler pure substance. You cannot decompose your oxygen to form carbon and nitrogen and whatever. So elements, they are like the units of every pure substance. So compounds are formed by the combination of elements. When elements come together in a fixed composition, they form compounds. And mixtures, when substances combine physically, it is called a mixture. Like your garin that you drink, you put the garin into the water, the garin does not react chemically with the water to form a new substance, and it's still garin and water. So that's what we call a mixture. So a mixture is when substances combine but do not go into a chemical reaction. Okay? So now, knowing this, now let's go further. You would like to know the differences between these three because the objective relating to this subtopic is that differentiate between element mixture and a compound. Okay, an element definitely can, dif you can differentiate an element from a compound. Compounds we have sodium hydroxide, sodium chloride, the gases of the six acid, hydrogen chloride, and all the rest. So you know oxygen, nitrogen, and so on. So you be able to distinguish between an element and a compound. That would be pretty easy. But when it comes between a mixture and a compound, well, a lot of you may find this hard. So let me give you how to differentiate between a mixture and a compound. The number one difference between a mixture and a compound, a compound is formed by fixed combination. So you see tetrahedral of a six acid now. If that hydrogen does not, is no longer the two atoms, it's now three atoms, it will no longer be tetrahedral of a six acid. There must be a fixed composition because if it is not up to that, particular amount of each substance it will not be able to form the compound but for the gari and water that I gave as an example of a mixture if the gari is higher than the water it's still a mixture of gari and water if the water is higher than the gari it's still a mixture of gari and water so the number one difference between a mixture and the compound is that a compound is formed by fixed combination while a mixture is not formed by fixed combination okay the number two difference between a mixture and a compound is that a compound, form, the formation of a compound involves great heat changes, while the formation of a mixture does not involve great heat changes. Like when you put your water into the gary, the water suddenly gets super hot. No. But in compounds, formation of compounds, you get things like exothermic reaction, endothermic reaction, and so on, because some give out heat, while some absorb heat from the atmosphere. The number three difference between a mixture and a compound is that okay, in a mixture there is no change in mass, but in a compound there can be change in the mass. The number four difference between a mixture and a compound is that a mixture cannot be represented by a chemical formula, while a compound can be represented by a chemical formula. So you cannot represent a mixture by a chemical formula. Only a compound can be represented by a chemical formula. Who can give me the formula for gari and water? Oh, come on. I've been calling gari and water for a long time now. That's the only mixture. Even salt and water, when you dissolve salt, when you put salt into water, it forms a solution which is still a mixture. So there's no formula for salt and water solution since it's a mixture. You write it as salt plus water. Now, the fifth 
difference between a mixture and a compound is that the compound, when it is formed, they have new properties, different from the properties of the individual elements. So you can see that hydrogen, highly inflammable gas, and oxygen, the sustenance of our life as we breathe in oxygen. And when they come together, they form water. You cannot breathe in water, right? And you, water is also not inflammable. In fact, it can even turn off the fire if you pour the water into it. So you can see that there's a whole brand new property when they come together, okay? But in a mixture, the two properties are still there. Like you see the salt and water solution I gave as an example of a mixture. When the salt combines with the water, the water is still salty. And the water is still water. You understand? Okay. So now let's go for that. So I'll be giving a jam questions that they ask on this topic, okay? And hold on. Whenever I call a question, try to pause the video, answer the question on your own, then play the video to see if you are going to get it, okay? So by so doing, it keeps you active within the section and also helps you understand better. So the first question on our list is from Jam 1978. Hypochlorous acid is used as a bleach because A. It is a strong acid. B. It yields chlorine readily in pure water. C. It is an oxidizing agent. And D. It's, weak, it's a weak acid. Okay, the answer here is it is an oxidizing agent. Okay. Hypochlorous acid is also known as oxochlorate 1 acid, okay, H-O-C-L. When it reacts, it forms hydrogen chloride and oxygen. So the oxygen going out, it was forms an oxide with the other substance and by so making, removing the color, that is how it works as a bleaching agent. Our second question from element mixture and compound is that it's from Jam 1987. Which of the following is a mixture? Now open your ears and let's go. Granulated sugar, that's A, B, C water, C sodium chloride, and D iron filling. Okay, now how many of you got this one? The answer is C water. You know, C water is salty, it's just like the salt and water solution that I give one as an example. Okay? So now the question three is from Jam 1989. Which of the following will support the conclusion that a solid sample is a mixture? A. The solid can be ground into fine powder. B. The density of the solid is 2.25 gram per decimeter cube. C. The solid has a melting range of 300 degrees Celsius to 375 degrees Celsius. And D, the solid absorbs moisture from the atmosphere. Remember I said element mixture and compound. That element and compound are pure substances. Because they have fixed properties. So a mixture is not a pure substance. Because it does not have fixed properties. Now you get so, the answer here is C. The solid has a melting point from 300 degrees Celsius to 375 degrees Celsius. That is, it does not have a definite melting point. It's within a range. So, you see that that would be the correct answer. That's what shows that that substance is a mixture. So, we are going to question 4. So, question 4 is from Jam 1978. If chlorine is bubbled into water and the yellowish green colored solution is exposed to bright sunlight for a while, A. The solution will give out chlorine gas and hydrogen gas. B. The solution will produce chlorine gas and oxygen. And C. The solution will give out a solution with producing hypochloric acid. And D. The solution is decomposed giving out hydrogen and chlorine. When chlorine dissolves in water, 
it forms hypochlorous acid okay so the answer is c the question five we ask for element mixture and the compound the question five is that which of the following gases has a pungent smell turns red litmus paper blue that is the thing is alkaline or like it is and forms dense white fumes with hydrogen chloride gas if you check the test for hydrogen chloride you see that ammonia is what has these properties ammonia is like is basic and also it forms white fumes when put into hydrogen chloride okay you see that with d okay so don't forget to subscribe so you can continue with this series because i'm just getting started and i'll finish the syllabus before the ending of april by god's grace so you should subscribe and turn on the notification so anytime i upload a video on the series you are going to see it bye for now